Hi everyone, welcome to MLB The Show Mondays, powered by GameStop. For MLB The Show 19, one of the areas of focus was defensive efficiency, defensive intelligence, and making hitting more fun and rewarding than ever. We have all new fielding AI that makes fielding more realistic than ever. Outfielders' jumps off the bat will now vary more depending upon how good of a fielder they are. There's a new fielding ability indicator under the player's feet. It gives you a quick reminder of how good or bad the fielder is you're controlling. Playing hits off the wall will now be easier or harder to pick up depending upon the ability of the fielder. We've recorded over 1,300 new fielding animations for MLB The Show 19. The motion capture list includes hundreds of new catches, pre-pitch catches in the infield, and animations to help separate players' abilities more. Playing out of position now will result in an increased frequency of fielding miscues. We haven't forgotten about the head-to-head -head competitive crowd either. There's now a full arsenal of animations that allow you to effectively and efficiently stop base running exploits. To summarize our flash to leather improvement suite, fielding ability, reaction time, speed, arm accuracy, and arm strength all play a huge part in field success or failures in MLB The Show 19. Speaking of user skill, it matters more in hitting. We've worked all year on improved hit variety, better swing timing, and you can expect pure contact hitters to be more effective. Make sure you join us next week for another GameStop Monday and pre-order MLB The Show 19 to receive 10 standard packs and one gold player choice pack. Pre-order at GameStop and receive their exclusive Gear Up choice pack. PlayStation. Hello everyone, welcome to the first of many pre-launch MLB The Show 19 live streams where we're gonna take deep dives into all of the feature set things that are new and awesome in the game. To my left we have gameplay director of 21 years, Chris Gill. It's a long time. And to uh, my hey, further that's left that's we have Kyle Saul who's been here for What's going on everybody? It is a long yeah, time. That's not, that is, that is not as impressive. <laughs> not a, very, very not long bad. time. Not so bad. this is the first of two live streams today. Uh, this one started at 11 a.m. And then we're going to stream again at 3 p.m. This stream, we're going to talk about defense. Basically, we're yes, really going to get into the minutia of everything that was in the GameStop Monday and the IGN interviews and stuff like that. It's going to be an awesome stream. So before we start talking about defense, we want to clear up a few quick things that was going out there rumbling. Pitch speeds. Uh, and MLB to show 19 on the highest levels, they're faster they're than faster. ever. Absolutely. Faster than it's ever been. And on the lower end, from all star and down, the pitch speeds aren't as fast. So for those of you that can make it, you know, to yep. legend into the uh, World Series in ranked seasons, pitch speeds will be faster than they've ever been. And for the rest of us like me who aren't that good at the game, common folk, common a little folk, bit, little bit slower. It, it'll be a little bit slower. <laughs> uh, so let's let's get to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Well, I'm excited to be back and, and doing this again. It was a really fun year of development for us mm -hmm. on on the defensive side, and um, I think everybody's going to be happy with the stuff we we end up uh, shipping this game with. Um, I got to say, first and foremost, it was um, it was important. It's important to note that. You know, it was it was the fans, it was our community that we we really studied to to make the changes that we made this year. Um, so we 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 spent a lot of time watching streamers. You know, with streamers play online. Um, it's important to watch the head-to-head -head games. Uh, it, the game's totally different when you're playing somebody else than it is when you're playing against the CPU or just watching the CPU play itself. So um, it was really important for us to study these um, online games, watch the streamer stream. And, and see the frustrations and see what people got upset about. And to be honest, there was a lot of things that were wrong in our game that needed to be addressed. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just to be as transparent as possible, we, we, we take that stuff to heart. And I know a lot of times, you know, the guys will rag on us about mm -hmm. certain things and things <laughs> happen. And yeah. um, a lot of times um, it is our fault. And we, I, I'm happy to say that we addressed every single one of those issues this year. It was our biggest focus. Um, it's not always our fault. I think sometimes it's it's user skill, and I think they get frustrated and they'll say they got mm -hmm. animation or it was the game's fault. But I think we took care of a lot of things, especially head to head. Um, no doubt. Um, and 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 I do um, I do want to say that all the changes that we made are going to you know are across the board on 
all of the different um, styles of play. So whether you're playing offline, online, um, all of our changes go into all of our modes that we play. Um, but our major focus was specifically on two-player online competitive baseball games. Um, so that being said, um, I'll go over our changes, and then what we're going to do is we're going to show over the last couple of days, uh, we've been uh, creating a whole bunch of um, uh, videos yeah, for you guys. plus 50. videos. 50 so it's a lot of show. videos. You just got to have to <laughs> hang in there and watch them. I think uh, there's going to be some redundancy in there, um, but the idea is to give you a different variety of each kind of topic that we talk about. Yeah. Um, to make sure you fully understand what's going on and um, with the changes that we made. And, 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 and more importantly, I think, um, really break down um, the specifics as to how we're combating some of the exploits online or how people are taking advantage of other people online. Um, when guys say they got animation, and I think the community kind of understands what that term mm -hmm. is, um, how we were able to spend um, hours and hours in the motion capture studio writing um, tons of new logic to be able to put the game into your hands, the community's hands, and say, look, if you make mistakes, it's on you, it's not on the game. And so that was really important to us that we, we were able to facilitate, and I think the key word for defense this year is efficiency, that we made sure. the game as efficient as possible mm -hmm. so that now when something happens, you have all the tools in the game to make the plays. Um, and then it, um, ultimately it's going to be on you, the user, and your skill to be able to see who's the best player Ayo. out there. And we'll have two go. legend reveals. One legend reveal at the end of this stream, and then we'll have another legend reveal at the end of the hitting stream. Yeah, so some yep. of the things you're going to see today, um, you're going to see what happens to players when you play out of position. There's a lot of examples of that. Um, don't get too caught up in seeing errors or misplayed balls because there's going to be a lot of videos of that. but. We're trying to drive home what happens when you're not um, putting together your roster the right way. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to put a power first baseman that has, you know, a secondary position of left field and you want to try to put him at third base, well, you're going to, you know, he's going to be susceptible to making errors over there. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're really trying to do is promote um, good rosters, you know, making quality decisions when you're building your rosters that if you're going to focus on defense or you're going to focus on offense. Yeah, those guys are going to be liabilities if you put them out of position. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of examples of that. Defensive efficiency, which is what I brought up, it's going to we're going to show you a lot of examples of that. Um, we got some new stuff this year which is cool that um, kind of, you know, along with the player's ability, um, we have the playing the balls off mm -hmm. the wall, so it'll be user part user skill part, you know, players part attributes. Player ratings, yep. And then combating exploits. So those are some of the things that we're going to show and talk about. Um, so it is safe to say that that a lot of work has been done with like secondary positions and players out of positions. We've totally kind of relooked at that and reexamined it to really evaluate and differentiate those really good defenders and the poor defenders. So you have to think about yeah, those, those types of choices are when you're in the when you're more. making those lineups. Show you videos of that. Yeah, and so like, yeah, and as you're as you're watching, you're going to see the little shields under their feet. Um, and it's gonna basically that's just showing uh, from what is it from bronze all the way up to diamond. Yeah. So you got four different shields or five. There's a common, yeah, there's a common as well, just right? So empty. right away you know when you're watching the players or you're you're playing somebody online, you could see the kind of defense they have out there. You want to try to exploit a third baseman that might be a bronze, and put down a drag bun or something because you can mm -hmm. see that he's got a guy there that might be a power guy, but. You know, he doesn't really care. He's going to play this guy at third right. and, and, you know, Regardless. take his chances. So you're going to see those um, when you're playing, which is going to kind of give you this reminder of who you have out there. And then at the same time, you're, it's, it's, going to, it's going to kind of uh, reiterate, like, making great plays. You're going to see that a lot of the times when you got your diamonds and your, your silver guys out there, those guys are going to be making good plays consistently. And then you got your lower end guys that are going to be making the majority of the mistakes. And again, when we're talking about errors, you got to understand that um, these are scaled. So um, the, your better players, if you're, if you're going to spend time and you, you want guys on defense where defense matters, it's important to you know, go after those cards, go Absolutely. after those guys that can play defense because they're going to win you games now more than ever. So it's more important to have a better defense than it ever has been in our game. Um, so a good, you know, you want to have a balanced lineup. You want to have a balanced lineup with, with contact hitters, power hitters, blah, blah, blah. And then defensively, you want to make sure you're, you know, sometimes you have to sacrifice, but it's important right. to have defense. Okay, so um, that being said, Matt, um, we'll start one in one second. Um, I do want to make this point, though, 
that um, talking about uh, primary and secondary positions and playing out of positions. So what does that mean? Well, when you're in your um, lineups and you highlight your player, we show what their secondary positions are. We have a formula um, where um, it makes perfect sense if a guy's uh, a, a shortstop and his secondary position is third base. Okay, you move him to third, he's going to be fine. But the way that works is, you know, you, we make these assumptions about shortstops being probably the best athlete. So if you have a 99 shortstop, he's probably going to be able to play anywhere except for pitch and catch. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. He's not going to lose too many points. Right. But if you got a first baseman who's a 99 and you try to put him at shortstop, just because he's a 99 at first base, that doesn't translate, right? No, yeah. <laughs> not at all. So, so even though he was a 99, he's going to lose a lot more moving to short. So our formula knows what position you're moving to. It makes a lot of baseball sense. Um, it does matter your primary position, what your attribute is. That, that is a huge yeah. impact as far as moving to another position. Um, but if you're trying to move, and we're going to show you examples of this kind of stuff, you know, like a catcher to short or a catcher to center field and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, and the other thing is that I wanted to point out, too, with that, with those ratings, is we're not projecting what somebody would be in the future at that position. So if we knock you way down, so let's take Buster Posey, for example. If I take Buster as a catcher, he's a good athlete. That guy was a shortstop in high school. I know he played... Um, I think he played short in college, and then yeah. he became a catcher his like sophomore year. Uh, he played basketball. The guy's a good athlete. I'm sure he could figure out how to go back and play shortstop again and be semi-serviceable at shortstop position, right? But we're not projecting what he's going to be when we switch positions. We're saying, what would Buster be if we just put him out there today? And mm -hmm. so that's what you're going to get yeah. when you're trying to move guys around, and that's right. what makes sense. Okay, Matt, so let's go. Um, so we have a lot of videos. We're just going to kind of go over these videos. Uh, this is the first one. Okay, before you start it, so what I'm going to show you here is an example of a few different things. Um, we started off with putting uh, LaCroix, the catcher, at shortstop. Okay, and so this sequence is going to be LaCroix at shortstop, and then you're going to see Cozart, the third baseman, at shortstop, and then the last one in this is going to be Simmons. Simmons at shortstop and you're going to see a difference um, not only in what how they catch and throw but you're going to see a difference in the button accuracy meter which we made a change, made a change that we haven't talked yeah, about yet uh, no we haven't talked about it but i'll talk about it a little bit now during this let's go ahead and roll it so there's lacroix playing short so Stumble. go ahead and stop um, and back it up and show the um, button accuracy meter when it comes up until when it's full. Yeah, you can see how tiny that, that green and if spot you, is. Yeah, exactly. Okay, go back. <laughs> back to, there you go, that's happens, fine. Happens okay, so uh, it's gonna be a little bit smaller than that. Uh, we're still working on this meter. Um, him being out of position, totally out of position from a catcher um, to shortstop, you can see, first of all, it's yeah, really brutal. difficult for him to hit that nail the green uh, sweet spot on the meter. And, um, and again, his is going to be smaller. And then when you get, we get to Simmons, it's going to be bigger than what you're seeing. So just, you'll see it scale though on these three examples. Okay, go ahead. The next one, you're going to see me go into um, the sub menu here and I'm going to swap out um, LaCroix with uh, Cozart. And I'm going to put Cozart over at shortstop here. You see the switch and Cozart, uh, actually got drafted as a shortstop, so he's very serviceable at short. Um, he's going to be able to make plays. It's his secondary position, so he looks fine. You can mm -hmm. see I nailed the green. It was a little bit bigger than LaCroix. Mm -hmm. um, and then now you're going to see Simmons, Simmons. Um, who arguably is the best shortstop in the game. And there's so, a lot of nuance in this play you're about to see yeah. with Simmons, too. Yeah, you can just see how smooth he's going to be. Yeah, so, so now you're going to see a bigger sweet spot on the meter. Um, And that, is that where it finished? That's where it finished. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so there's three. That's a really good example. I really like that example because it really demonstrates a lot of what I've already talked about. It demonstrates the difference in the meter. So that's part of that is, like I was saying, there's, there's user skills involved mm -hmm. in trying to nail that meter. Mm -hmm. And then um, also the attribute, obviously, is a big factor in how that meter mm -hmm. looks, right? Um, so the, the button accuracy meter, it's changed this year. It's way more efficient where 
as last year, you would have to wait for that. So as soon as you initiated the button, mm -hmm. um, the throw sometimes wouldn't branch because you'd still be holding mm -hmm. it to get it to the right, green. Right. Now we're <clears throat> registering the throw on the button push. So wherever that guy releases the ball and wherever you're at on that meter, that's what you're gonna get. So it helps you turn double plays. It's mm -hmm. way more efficient. Okay, moving on to the second one. This is um, playing out of position. So you're gonna see Crawford uh, making a routine play in this example. And you'll see that I swap Crawford with the left fielder Shaw. Go ahead. So you got another really good shortstop here. Um, and again, this is just, like I said, we have a lot of different videos. Um, this is with the button accuracy meter off. So basically you're rolling the die here on your throwing attributes because we're not using the button accuracy meter. Um, and then you see I just go in here with Shaw. So I get uh, Chris Shaw, who's the left fielder, and I swap him with the shortstop. And it's just another example of playing out of position. And he's safe. And also, I saw a quick question. Uh, you saw the Simmons throw, you see he took his time, kind of showed off a little bit. That's because mm -hmm. that was a slow run. If that was a fast guy, if that was Billy Hamilton on, on the base pass run yeah. in the first base, he wouldn't have sorted to that throw animation. It's, he would have sorted yeah, to a quicker catch and a quick, quicker throw. Well, he, yeah, and Ramon's, Ramon's partly right there. Basically, we look at the times, but we'll get more into those differences that we made from throwing to catching in, from last year to this year, and we'll touch more on that throwing, and I'll talk about that Simmons throw when we get, when we get to that spot. Okay, so this one, go ahead. This one's Brandon Belt making a routine catch on a throw from Crawford, okay? So... And the ratings aren't final. All I'm doing here is showing a routine play over. Now I'm gonna switch Belt out with center fielder <clears throat> um, on Dugar and Dugar's secondary positions are left field and right field um, so obviously he's playing out of position at first base and so this is a little bit more difficult of a catch but kind of a routine catch for uh, for Belt right and it just mm -hmm. shows bringing in a center fielder trying to put him at first base is a liability okay so this one's kind of cool. Are, are you on number four now, Matt? Yeah. All right, cool. So I'll just brief you on this. This one's, okay, so you'll see some efficiency here on defense, but um, go ahead and roll it. The first thing you're going to see is um, a regular 5-2-3 double play, okay? So that's with everybody in their positions. Longoria throwing to Posey, Posey throwing to Belt. And now you're going to see the swaps that I make. So I take Buster Posey, I put him over at third base, Longoria at catcher, and then I switch Crawford over to third just to make sure we made the play. So right now I have Longoria at catcher. So here's what you're going to see, and then I'm going to have Matt rewind it back. Okay, now go back to the catcher spot. And freeze it. We'll go back one more. Something that we should mention is that for these videos, right Gil's there. using widgets, so when you see these, the PCI swing analysis and stuff, it's, it's not going to be correct because he's forcing the ball where he wants it, so it's going to be a mismatch, though. So try not to take a look at that right yeah, now. Yeah, they're going to talk as about it. As much as you guys want to. Right now. <laughs> Offense will be later today. Don't pay any attention to that right now. Kyle's exactly right. Okay, so what you're going to see here is, again, we got a player playing out of position. We've got Longoria at catcher, and again, I want to say this again, it's not like Longoria couldn't catch a ball and throw it to first mm -hmm. base. But if I were to take Longoria in the middle of a game and stick him behind the plate, it's not, that could be easy with all of his gear on yeah, and his mask enough. and trying to catch a ball and turn a double play. So how do we simulate that? We want to make sure that we're not allowing you to do these kind of things and they're kind of exploits and playing players out of position. So that green spot in the middle is going to be smaller, like I said. Um, but what you see here is you can tell right now, before he's caught that ball, I'm branching that throw. But because his attribute dropped so much playing out of position, he is not able to branch his throw. And so that's why you see him go to the throw ready position before he throws to first base. Okay, go ahead and play it. And you see that little pause there because he's forced to do that. We don't allow the quick branching throw that you saw Buster Posey do in the original video, or the first part, okay? Uh, going on to number five. 
Uh, and this one, player ratings matter more than ever. The primary positions, um, also players playing out of position versus playing in position. Okay, so this is, uh, this is Martinez versus Gordon. Okay, so we got Boston at Kansas City. We got Gordon, who I think is like a, maybe a 90 fielder, um, his overall. And then Martinez, who's a, a 48 and left fielder. So what I did here is I have one hit on. Um, and using widgets, I'm going to swap from top of the inning to bottom of the inning. And the first example I'm going to show, J.D. Martinez in left field playing this ball. Go ahead and roll it. So J.D. Martinez, he's a 48 overall. We're going to zoom in here so you're going to see the, the beginning of his start transition. And you can see J.D. Martinez getting a bad jump. Okay, so these bad jump animations are going to be in there for the majority of the guys that are playing out of position. You're going to see that quite often or for low ability Fielders. everyday yeah. outfielders. That's huge. Okay? And it's not going to play every single time. Yeah, yeah so don't get, yeah, don't, th <laughs> yeah. th these things are scaled. They're not going to play every time. Yeah. This is just so you guys understand that these are the kinds of things that happen mm -hmm. in real life. The reason he's a 48 is because he's not as good as Gordon, who's an yeah. 80 or 90. I forget what he's he Gordon. a DH. Gordon's yeah. an 80 he's left DH. fielder. So, so Gordon is not going to get a bad jump on the same kind of hit that Martinez right. would. Um, we have bad jumps in all directions, and it's all based off of how hard the ball is hit and the angle that the ball is hit. Okay? Um, we also have bad, um, bad route start transitions, but those are only used by the CPU because the user's skill takes over for uh, when he's the puppet, the CPU, or the user player. But you can see here, this ball lands and goes for a ground rule double. Okay, roll it, and we got Gordon on the exact same hit. And the first thing you notice here is Gordon took a direct route to the ball. Right. He didn't have a bad jump at the beginning. So that in and of itself is gonna help him get to this ball. Mm -hmm. So he makes a running catch in the same location. Um, you can attribute the majority of that to the fact that he gets a good start transition, okay? The cool thing about this is that if I have defensive liabilities in the outfield, and this is something I think everybody's going to like, it's going to help you on the offensive side. Absolutely. Instead of sitting there and yelling at your screen, and I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of watching the streamers, and, and they'll say, oh, that's Martinez in left field. He's covering way too much ground. Well, we did something mm -hmm. about that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a video game, so if you take control of the guy and you run him right there, we can't make you miss fly balls mm -hmm. every single time, right? So we have to do something that separates the good players from Absolutely. the bad players. And these are the kinds of things that happen in real life that we're able to put in. And I think, I think everybody's going to be really excited about this with the amount that they're happening mm -hmm. um, and how we scale them. <clears throat> okay. Um, Okay, and this next one is I touched on a little bit. This is the CPU. Okay, so go ahead and play this. Okay, so in this example, I took the left fielder, Chris Shaw, and I moved him over to center field. Now, his primary position is left field. We moved him over to center field. Um, it's a secondary position, and it doesn't mean that he's going to take a bad route start transition every single time, but he's got a, he's got a bigger chance of it happening yeah. mainly because he's playing – not out of position, but in a secondary position. And that's the trade-off. Mm -hmm. That's a trade-off. And, and trade -off. this, again, this is for the CPU. They'll take those bad start transitions. Um, and then, yeah, exactly. So if I take um, the other, the sec I think this keeps going, right? Yeah, this is an example of a good one. Okay, and so, and so yeah, and so here's um, putting the center fielder back in there, Duger. And you can nice see round. here. The, the cool thing about this is we put in um, these non-direct routes years ago, and I love them because you can see them tracking the ball here, but um, the main thing is that the start transition right here, that he took a better starting route than you saw Shaw take. Right. Shaw went more 90 degrees and then had to um, change a direction and turn. You can see here he kind of took um, an off-direction route, but then mm -hmm. he kind of was guiding to the ball, right, and right, tracking exactly. the ball, so it was a little bit more efficient for him. Okay, cool, so that's there. Are we on nine? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. We'll just kind of roll through these. Here's Posey playing right field. Oof. So this just shows Posey, you put him out in right field, he has the same problem. Here's a bad jump animation. 
and uh -oh. this ball gets by him. Okay, you can move on to the next one. This is the exact same hit with your everyday right fielder, Williamson. He gets a good start catch in, exact same hit. It's a pretty easy running backhand catch for him. Okay, now let's put, big, um, let's put the panda in left field on number 11. Same kind of thing. He gets a bad jump. And the panda examples are kind of cool because we're also showing off new animations that we got, which, you know, some, like the misanimation that mis we, we have right. out here uh, along with the bad jumps. Um, the next one is we put uh, Dugar back in center field. Or wait, no, I jumped ahead of myself, didn't I? 12. 12. Oh, okay, Panda misplays a fly ball. So I basically just wanted, I wanted you guys to see these um, examples of some of these new uh, misplays as well. So when you're playing players out of position, um, there's kind of something explaining to you why this is happening as opposed to him playing a catch and the ball mm -hmm. just boinking off of him or just going by his glove. Mm -hmm. So that's something new that we did this year. Um, so you can kind of understand why you made an error. You actually see the error animation. And you'll see more of those when we show some infield examples too. But even in the outfield, when they, uh, when they are making an error, you're going to see an error reaction after the miss, as opposed to them playing a catch or people like, what happened? And they don't even know what happened, but the ball went by. Yeah, and they just absolutely. assumed he should have made a catch, but the ball went by him. And so they thought a lot of times it was a bug, when in fact we were just saying it was time for you to make an error. Okay, okay, so that, I think that's good. We can go to the, uh, the ball ribbons now. So that's enough of the bad jump stuff. We can skip the 15 and 16. They're basically the same kind of um, videos that you've been watching. Um, okay, so are you on 17? All right, cool. Okay, so here's a new feature that we have this year, and this is another way that you can kind of separate yourself, not only um, as a user, mm -hmm. you know, playing balls off the wall. I think some people, and we know like in, in, internally here when people are playing, there's guys better at playing off the wall than others. Um, we added a ribbon that shows the actual, um, I think you saw it in the, uh, in the trailer that we played mm -hmm. before, yeah. um, the path of the ball off the wall. And how we do that is we take, uh, we scale it from the best player to the worst player. So what happens if like, let's say you're a zero out there in the outfield, you won't see any of it. You have no idea where that ball is gonna go when it hits off the wall. If you have a 99, you're gonna see the full path from the wall all the way to where it's going to bounce. Now, last year, the balls bouncing off the wall were pretty drastic. I'm happy to say that we've made some adjustments to that. So now we're looking at all the surface types. We're looking at um, the padded fences, the brick, um, any, green any, monster, any yeah. the green monster type. aluminum. So all the surface types in like the cages that are in between sometimes in the archways, like in um, San Francisco or in Houston. Um, oh, yeah. We have uh, different uh, detections coming off of there. So um, our AI programmer looked at the physics of balls in real life, similar to how we did home runs mm -hmm. in the past. We looked at video of balls hitting these different surface types, mm -hmm. and we emulated how that ball bounces off all those surface types. So now you're not going to see these rocket bounces, um, except for unless you hit brick, like mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and there's not a lot of brick. Right. but. Um, most of the time you got the padded fences and you'll see an example of that. So the first example is going to be, um, okay, so that's the right fielder. That's Williamson. So you saw, if you go back and just pause it where you see, um, okay, so he is a 75 rated fielder and you can see that ribbon starts like a little bit above his head there in that view. Um, if he was a 99, you would, you would have seen the first bounce all the way over his head and then the continuation of all the bounces. Okay, this is huge. Um, so this is a 75. So it's a little bit more helpful than let's say move forward and I will put, um, who did I put in right field? I think I put Posey out there. And so he has no, no path. Chance. You can see a little trail at the end, right at the beginning. So you see the tail end, we're showing him where it'll end up. If he wants to play it really safe, he, he can just run back to where those white lines are and then run toward the ball and try to go get it. Um, but you can see it's kind of vague. You don't know where to stand. And this is one of the results that could happen, um, not knowing where to stand underneath that ball. Should help with a lot of those inside the park home runs that end up happening. Exactly. And the next example, um, 
The next example is just an example of the ball hitting off the padded fence. So this is, um, this is a new example of our ball physics um, hitting different surface types. And I think if you're used to our game, you would have noted, you know that that ball would have bounced very similar to the one we just showed you on the brick. Yeah, that absolutely. thing would have bounced way over his yeah. head. So this is a huge change, the way that you play balls off the wall now. And there was no ribbons because that was the CPU on that one. Okay. Okay, moving forward. Now we're on fielding efficiency. Okay, so we talked a little bit at the beginning. We said we we're going to talk about fielding efficiency, and um, infield's really important. Again, I have to keep going back to watching people play. And, and again, if you're playing um, against the CPU, you're not going to get the wide range of uh, hit variety that you get when you play another user, right. especially, especially the tappers and the choppers, because um, you get a, got a lot of people chasing when you're playing mm -hmm. two-player games, right? And so when you play online, you're going to get a lot of different hit types, um, especially in the infield and different heights of balls. Uh, we did an inventory of all of our catches. And after watching people play and seeing people just either miss balls because they couldn't get to them or having to sit back on ground balls and wait for, you know the, that animation <laughs> wave in any wait for the down hop of a ground ball, we figured out a plan um, to fill those holes. And so um, all of our... So basically we had three different heights, low, medium, and high. But we filled the slots in between the low, medium, and high. And we did that on charging catches and pre-pitch catches. Okay, so I don't know if, that might be kind of hard to understand, but, low, medium, but high. the result is gonna be total efficiency on defense. Um, the other thing that we did on the logic side for defense, and this is the really big change that we made. Um, in real life in baseball, especially infielders, you need to know where you're going to go with that ball before the ball is hit. Super important. So if I'm playing short, right, and I got, and there's nobody on base, and I have the Benji Molina hitting, then I can play further back. I, heck, I can play back on the grass, and I could take my time, probably right. triple pump, jog halfway to the mound, and then toss it to the first base. Right? <laughs> probably. I mean, probably I, got plenty, the first. I got plenty of time. Okay, if I got a guy like Billy Hamilton that's hitting – then as a shortstop, before he steps in that box, I gotta go, look, I gotta get a little less coverage here, so I gotta step in a little bit, and anything this guy hits, for the most part, unless he just hits a missile at me, I gotta go get it. I gotta go get the ball. And if you've ever played baseball, and you understand baseball, you know that those two steps that you take to go get a ball, as opposed to sitting back on a ball, is the difference between that guy beating that ball out at first base or not. Absolutely. So what we had in the past was throwing efficiency. We had throws that came from all of our catches, and we really worked hard on getting as, the fastest throws we possibly could get. But that doesn't really matter if I got Hamilton mm -hmm. running and I'm sitting back on a ball. Yeah, right? that catches right? I need to go get that ball. So mm -hmm. if I'm charging ground balls in the past, if the catch analysis is sorting the catches within those groups mm -hmm. and it says, oh, we found your catch. We don't have that height when you're charging, so settle down set up and play a routine catch. So now instead of catching that, that ground ball, charging it out in front, I set up and I catch it down here. He gets those extra steps and he beats out an infield hit, right? So that was a huge change for us. So it was two parts. One was going in and getting all the animations that we actually needed um, from the pre-pitch catch and the charging catches. And then we also got some new setup catches too that not only look really cool, um, and, and we have to, every time we get new catches, we have to get full arsenal of throws. I have to get tosses. I have to get, you know, short tosses, medium tosses, long tosses, casual throws. So everything we do, you're talking in teens and teens and teens of catches, right? So like at least 36 for those. And if we want more variety, we add on top of that. So it really all adds up to lots of animations that we gathered for specifically just creating more efficiency uh, for infill ground balls. Okay, so that being said, we'll, we'll show you some of these videos here. Um, okay, I'm, what am I on, 19, Matt? 20. No, I'm on 19. 19 would be the first one in fielding efficiency? No, 19 was the padded ball. Okay. So 20. 20. Oh, you're right. On my paper, it says 19 twice. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm one off. Matt's always right. All right, cool. So go ahead and just 
Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm gonna go in slow motion here. So this is an example of exactly what I just talked about. This is a pre-pitch charging catch that he's gonna use, I think, or is it gonna be, let me see. No, okay, so he just, he went and got that ball instead of playing that ball back. And he knew that runner was fast. And he got Baez running. Or wait, no, it's, I don't know who's running on that. I can't see my notes, but, but you can tell he's getting down the line. So as a shortstop, he had to go get that ball. And that was a new mid-level catch that, that we got to make sure we filled those holes. Play the next one. This is a pre-pitched. All right, cool. So I'll show this one in slow motion too. So when I say pre-pitch, that means the catch is actually starting from the pre-pitch. And you can see it right there where he's attacking the ball at a 45 degree angle. Now I could honestly say that last year, that exact same hit, he's gonna move more lateral back and he's gonna set up. And I guarantee you that that guy would have beat that throw out at first. So it's not like we're creating something that's overly efficient where they're going to do something that a real major league player wouldn't do. But what I'm telling you is that that shortstop in real life knows that if I'm going to turn this double play, I got to go get that ball. And so that's what we're simulating here. You have that 45 degree angle, pre-pitch catch, charging, that he's going to go attack right away. And we got catches. I, can't, I don't even know the number, but lots and lots of catches from the pre-pitch position going to get the ball 45 degrees and straight ahead. Okay, do the next one. Is this 22 on yours? Okay, similar. And the next one's a second baseman, so this would be... Oh, no. Go back. Yeah, back side. Are you on to the next one? Yeah. Okay, so here's your second baseman. Again, pre-pitch. And what I really like about this one, and so we have built-in logic that knows when he's sorting these catches that there's a runner coming to get out of the way. So he's going to play a charging catch. And when he feeds the shortstop, you can see him drifting back to get out of the way of the shortstop to clear a lane for him to throw. So go ahead and play that again. So this is additional logic that goes along not only with the efficiency, but aesthetically looks a lot better and makes a lot more sense that he's not running through the, the runner and he's clearing ground to get away out of the way uh, for the uh, shortstop. And again, that was another pre-pitch charging catch. And when you say pre-pitch, I saw somebody ask in the chat, you mean the, the catch is starting as soon as the ball is being... Yeah, so when I say pre-pitch, and I was trying to make that clear. So let's just say, okay, so you're the puppet. And when you take control of the player, if you run and you go into a local motion where you're actually running strides, running strides before he plays a catch, mm -hmm. those are all running catches or setup catches, okay? Anytime I say pre-pitch, that means the catch is actually coming from the pre-pitch position, which is what you see on your screen right now. So the second baseman is in a pre-pitch position. The catch is actually going to start right away. Okay, so that one right there. Let's see if I have it on here. I can just tell by looking. So that was not a pre-pitch catch because he went into a run. So as a user, you push the stick and you actually ran that guy in to go get that ball. But what will happen as the user, every time you're, you're playing as a user, the CPU is always going to point you in the direction that you should be going. So if the CPU didn't, if that ball was hit like at 100 you know, miles an hour, it would have just played a setup catch right there. Either knocked it down or would have played a catch right there on the spot. But it knew the situation, so it allows you to push the stick forward and go get that ball instead of setting up. Okay, so a lot of times when you're pushing in on that stick mm -hmm. and then the CPU would take control of you and then set you up in a play and you're like, no, I don't want <laughs> to set up, I want to go yeah, get it. Let's go. It will go get the ball now appropriately based on the situation. So double play is with faster batters and in general with faster, in general when there's faster hitters at the plate. Okay, Matt, what are we on? 25. 25. Charging mid. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and that's just another example of a new catch. So that's, that's a new height. It's not a medium, it's not a low, it's like a, a high mid. So it's like right at shoulder height. And so the reason I wanted to point this one out is because the, the route that that shortstop can take to that ball is basically determined on the catches that we have that are in that group within that direction. We might have had to change his direction, maybe angle him back if we didn't have that height, mm -hmm. right? Or angle him in more and potentially not have a catch. So it always would have had to move him back, which gives that runner time. So having more of these catches 
allows the defense to be more yeah, efficient. You can go attack these balls ball. now. And we, we saw so many examples of this from streams <laughs> where the ball gets hit and he does this catch. And you're like, girl, go get the god dang on ball. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so here's an example of somebody that's not as quick and he sets up to make the play. He doesn't have to go get the ball. And I wanted to mention too that toss, the second baseman's toss to the shortstop. Um, I'm sure there was some frustration, especially a lot of you guys that have played this game. There's a lot of our tosses that weren't efficient. We went through and redid all those tosses where they might turn and had take too many steps before they release it. Um, we redid all of them so they're super quick and efficient. They're coming right out of the glove. Um, again, our focus was to make sure that if there, anything went wrong, it was on you and not on the game, right? And so that, that was my number one goal. Okay, go ahead. Same thing. Showing off some cool animations and just the same logic that we've just been talking about. It's an example of him having to go get this ball. He knows that the batter is pretty quick. So he's got to go get it. Makes a nice feed to the shortstop. And I'll get to that in a second because we added a bunch of new shortstop turns that are going to allow you to get the ball to him quicker. Keep going. Which I think is a good segue into this next one. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first example I want to show you guys. So if you notice, the shortstop right now is going to catch this ball a little sooner. I'm sorry, a little later um, than he would have last year. And so stop it right now. Okay, so what we did was in the motion capture studio, so last year we had, um, we had catches just before the bag and then, and then we had uh, catches at the bag where they were setting mm -hmm. up. So what would happen is if the shortstop or second baseman was getting to the base and they got caught in the middle of setting up the animation, some sometimes you couldn't branch your throw as like the other middle infielder. So like in this situation, it would be this second baseman not being able to branch because the shortstop wasn't set up yet. So basically what we did is we filled those holes. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch of different distances. So if you look at the shortstop here, starting about one more stride further from there all the way to the base, um, we did uh, double play turns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got all the directions and catching the ball. So you can, so if he's got to get rid of this ball now, he could get rid of it now. In another step, he could get rid of it. In another step, he could get rid of it. So we got this whole sequence of catches, which again, makes it for more efficient baseball and being able to get rid of the ball and throwing the ball full speed on all these double plays. You can keep going, Matt. What are we on, Kyle? 26. Oh, 29. Fine We're seeing a lot, of, a lot of questions about pitcher wall. Um, that stuff like that will be addressed a little bit more in the hitting stream, but you know we can confidently say that there is pretty much limit. Nothing. We haven't seen it. We, we just, you <laughs> we barely even see it. it. I mean, you on, we captured more animations for balls hit at the pitcher to be able to field them correctly right in now. the right situations, but you're just not going to see balls flying off the pitcher's face, yeah. we didn't body see, like you, and we didn't like see, you did. We didn't see them in Alpha, and we didn't see them when all the community guys was right. here a few weeks so. ago. And y'all just asked them, like, they, they played the game for two days mm -hmm. straight. We just didn't, didn't see them. So I think this one's where there's above average runner. He had time to set up and make the turn. So, so he, they understand the times to base. They know how much time they have, right? It's always going to point you in the direction that you need to go, depending on who those, those, what those times are saying how fast those runners are. Keep going. Ooh, that was pretty, that looks nice. And so this is another example of what I was talking about, the different, um, uh, how many different animations we got for the turns here. This shows him having to catch this ball a little sooner. So he starts his animation there and covers a lot of ground. You can see that he's catching and throwing with his foot on the base, which is new this year. Keep going. Okay, so this is, are we on 30, what number, 30? 30. No, go ahead and play this, I wanna see which one it is. Yeah, go on to the next one. Keep 
Keep going. Okay, cool. So this is a good example too. So what I wanted to talk about on this one, this is an animation that sometimes people uh, misconstrue. You can see he's going back, but he has to go back. In order for him to make a good throw on this kind of play, you want to make sure of one out, okay? So you're not going to take the chance of trying to cut that angle off and like as if you were going toward third base. You have to step back. This ball's hit hard enough where it deserves to be a backhanded play. Okay, so you want to make sure of one always. And as a shortstop, you can see he kind of angled back and set up and made this play. But the important thing here to know is that um, he ended up getting him at first base only because he had a good turn on the other end and the batter probably was, you know, maybe an average runner. But at the same time, you got to understand sometimes these guys have to go back on balls. It doesn't make sense to go laterally on. Okay, go ahead. I think the next one is the one, two, three double play efficiency. Oh, after this. Next one. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. So I think hopefully that made a lot of you guys smile. I this play right here is a pro, was a big problem, was a big a problem, problem play. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples. But the big thing to look at here is how quickly that pitcher was able to feed the catcher. Um, one another thing that we added this year. Um, you can go on to the next one because I, there's three of them. So the other thing that we added was nice. go back and. Let's start that one again and pause it. Okay, so the other thing that we added was the pitcher's um, ability to charge balls and catch them at the mid-hop level instead of sitting back and fielding them like he did here. Now, I will say that some balls, like this one's not hit as high, it's not chopped as high. Mm -hmm. So he had time to set up on this play, which like a normal pitcher would do. But if he has to charge that ball, if it's, if it's bounced more, instead of sitting back and waiting for that to come down mm -hmm. and letting that run score, he's gonna go get that ball nice. and feed home point. And here you could see that he had time. Look how efficient those tosses are. And he was still able to turn yeah, that one, two, three double play, yeah. right? Um, and then I believe my next example after this one's gonna show a chopper where he comes and gets it. And so that's what I was describing just a second ago. Now I guarantee you that play right there, that pitcher last year would have played a setup catch. He would have started to run and then he would have Stop. squatted down, waited for that ball to come to the ground, and then he would have played this long underhand toss to home yeah. play. And he's safe. And, and, he's safe. and almost any average runner would have beat it out to home. Super frustrating play that's been resolved thanks to some new logic and new animations. You guys would be happy with that. Okay, so moving on. So we had 30, where we at, Shay? 39. Okay, these are some of our new take it yourself double plays. Oh, after oh. this one. Okay, this is different. I got a little ahead of myself. Go ahead and play that one again. So this is another new anime. This is another problem play where if they bunt or hit a little tapper down the first baseline, the pitcher would field this ball. He would come up and try to finish his catch, and then by then the runner would either be by him, or you would try to start your guy to go tag the guy, mm -hmm. um, and you wouldn't be able, it would be real clunky. You wouldn't really be able to get this guy out on these kinds of plays. So what we did this year is we got all in ones. So from the fielding animation, not only the low ones, we did all the different heights. So when the pitchers, right-handed or left-handed, come over and field that ball, and that runner's coming down the line, they can catch the ball and go right into attack, and you can see how seamless this is on this play. And these the, are all called all-in-ones? These are all new. So all these catch and tags are all-in-ones, and you can see the precision on the tagging here too. Uh, and we did all the different heights. So if he, the ball's chopped um, or if it's low, all the different heights from catching to... Yeah, at first I didn't think he got him, but then I, after further review, we looked at this camera. <laughs> and I, we're going to show this whole thing because we had to go to New York for this one to make sure he tagged him. What do you guys think? Ew. I don't know, we might zoom in here and see if he really got him. Let's get another angle. Got that San Francisco, <laughs> got that San Francisco I didn't believe there. it, so I had to go in and look. 
And look at that, you got him. That's A Rod, he slaps it out. <laughs> <laughs> Gets him on the hand. All right, cool. So those are some really cool animations that we got this year. I'm excited that um, that play, uh, that 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 trouble play has gone away. So that's good. So you move on, Matt. All right, this is some of our new take it yourself double plays. So you can see there he caught that ball real close to the bag, and this would get really clunky too. Getting really close to the bag and making catches. Um, the off middle infielder not knowing whether he should back off away or go cover and you get guys running into each other. We did a lot of work in this situation. You can see the second baseman backing away. The good communication between the shortstop and the second baseman. I got it. So he takes it himself and you can see the new animation from the catch where we did the uh, multiple running steps to get onto the bag depending on you never know, my second baseman could be playing way over. Those balls that are hit up the middle, I'm going to take that ball myself and vice versa. Mm -hmm. If the shortstop's over yeah. on the other side, I got my second baseman close to the back. And bag. another thing to remember take with those take it yourselves, like these are user controlled. So if that play happens in 19 and you press second base, if it's more efficient for him to just to go to second base, he's going to run the second base. He won't do a transfer throw. Then he'll throw it to first. So just like what you saw there, that's not a CPU play. That, that's a human play that can happen now in 19. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had the take it yourselves. The, the, the expansion of the take it yourselves has gone from not only second base, but it's gone to all the bases. So if I'm anywhere, let's say it's first and second, and the third, the ground ball takes me to a third base for my third baseman, if I hit square, it's just going to run over and step mm -hmm. on the bag, and now I can branch my throw to any other base. Right. And that's super efficient. Um, instead of having to run and try to guide your guy there, Basically, the idea is we, we're assuming that you, we know that that's what you're trying to do, right? You want to go step on the bag. Um, and we have the catcher doing it as well. So a little chopper right out in front of home plate. Mm -hmm. If the catcher gets it mm -hmm. and he has time to get back and step on home plate with bases loaded, all he has to do is hit X. He'll turn around, run back, step on, and throw to first. That's huge. Or throw wherever you want, actually. Okay, where are we at, Matt? 42. 42? 43. Okay. Oh, 43. Branching throw from tag. Okay, last one before we get to our final videos. Okay, and this, this is an example. We, we got more of these tag and throws this year. Uh, we showed this off last year, but I just thought this was a good play to show the intelligence of the CPU, of being able to not only go cover third on the steal, but be able to adjust and aesthetically look good, yeah. making a turn and going to catch that ball, tagging, and making a nice clean throw that branches in. Okay, so I left these, uh, well, I got the other cool plays at the end too, but we're on um, combating exploits, right? Okay, so this next round of videos that we're gonna show right now are basically all the exploits that we could think of that happen online um, that people would take advantage of. So we'll go over each one. This first one is a tag at second, throw home all in one. So. Go ahead and roll it and we'll just talk about it. So as you can see here, the guy at third is trying to take advantage of the throw to second. And as soon as he threw to second, the guy took off to home. And you can see the second baseman going to get the runner, tagging him and throwing to home all in one. Yeah, you can see him now, just come right, the difference, right off the safe, bat. Safe time. So the difference between 19 and 18 is that now, I mean, last year he would have stayed at the bag and if he got caught in that tag, that runner could have made it home. But now we detect, oh, he's a certain distance away. I have all these running tags. I can go play that branch into these throws that go to home or to any other base that I need to throw to. And it becomes way more efficient, way more realistic. And <clears throat> it's one of those exploits that guys aren't going to be able to take advantage of, right? Yeah. Or they will if you're sleeping. But at the same time, you can't blame the game. <laughs> you're going to end up blaming <laughs> yourself. Give it, give, putting you the control do. in your hands. All right, keep going, Matt. So I'm stealing third on this play. Routine play to short, throw across, and I try to steal. And you can see the efficiency. Immediately uh, branches to the throw. Yeah. Marte's running. Everybody knows Marte can run. So he's stealing third, and he just wheels all the way to home. So even, even our faster guys aren't going to be able to exploit these kinds of plays. You can see how quick he's able to turn and throw home and get him out. Keep going. Here's another example of the tag. So this would just be a double play situation. It's probably first and third. Um, instead of turning the double play, we're going to turn this camera around and show you here after this. So that just shows you the smoothness of the tag and throw. You'll see that'll spin the camera around and show you the situation. 
So it was first and second. The guy at second stole third on this play. See him taking off? So the guy in second stealing third, and he's going to just wheel. You see him rounding third right now. He's going home, and out of the corner of his eye, he saw that the guy was round, rounding and going home. So instead of turning a double play, traditionally, over to first base, he sees the guy, and he makes the throw to home. Okay, next. We've got another guy stealing third. Oh, or was he stealing third? I didn't see the beginning of the play. Did he round? No, keep going. Go all the way back to the beginning. Okay, so we have first and second. Yeah, we're He's stealing third. Play. We turn a routine double play. We try to wheel the guy all the way home. And you got a triple play. He's out by He's out efficient the first baseman He's is getting way third. out. What's that? Just how efficient quick the first baseman is at getting it. Right. Right home. Yeah, so we try to put all of our branch points and all of our first base catches to give them the ability to break out of those catches and be able to throw to any base as fast as possible. Okay, go ahead, move on. All right, so this one's glorious, right? <sighs> this is the one Steel that this genius. is the one that everybody online. I, I I'd love to see what they're writing in the chat right now. <laughs> okay, so this is the pitch out exploit where people would always turn around on a pitch out. Every single time they would see, and you would throw to second, he would make it back to first safely. He slips now. He slips. So he now, slips. thanks to Kyle in the motion capture studio, almost pulling his hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, worth it. How many takes it? Ooh. How many takes, Kyle? It was probably 30 or 40. Yep. <laughs> no, he did it pretty good. Just a couple. Um, pretty cool looking animation, but hey, look, all we're trying to do is make people play fairly, competitively, have fun and not take advantage of the game and other people. Now, mm -hmm. if other people are sleeping on the job and you can take advantage of it, take advantage yeah, of it, but it's it, not absolutely. gonna be the game's fault, right? So we're not gonna allow you to, to take off and steal and every time you see a pitch out, just go just back go to back. first yeah. safely. That just kind of defeats the whole purpose of a pitch out. He slips every so time. So now, when mm -hmm. you pitch mm -hmm. out, you have a better shot of getting the guy at second base, right? Because you're gonna, you're not, people aren't gonna be turning around anymore mm -hmm. when they have that slip and fall. Okay, go ahead. out by a country mile. Okay, so this just shows another exploit, which is a first and third situation. Steal your, run, steal your runner early from first, send your runner from third, step off pitcher. You see the, the middle infielder comes off, tags, and throws. That's sexy. So go back That's to the really beginning, uh, show That's the really beginning good. of that again so you can see how quick it is. So that's going to be tough to take advantage of. Okay, go ahead, Matt. All right, and so here's another exploit that people try to do quite a bit, which is take advantage of um, when you have a runner on second, wait for the throw to go across the diamond and just take off. Um, one of the biggest problems that we had before is we allowed them to, too, uh, to, to quickly turn. You can see the animation right there. We have just a, a slight stumble. There's two animations, one's longer than the other, but just enough time to make it more realistic if you really wanted to turn around and try to make that play. And you probably could still make it at times depending on when you turn around. You can see that one was closer to the right. bag. Um, but we're making the number, or we're making the times more realistic. So if you want to take that chance and try to do it, okay, well, there's going to be some consequences right. uh, potentially, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get that animation um, that, was, that we had in there before, which was like turning on a dime and being able to right, unrealistically right. Yeah. change your momentum and go back the other way. Which one we on, Shay? Video number oh, 51. Th I love this one. This, so this is new, and I think you guys will really appreciate this. I'll go ahead and back that up and start it again, then it'll slow it in slow motion. Okay, stop. Okay, so what you have here, what you have here is you got a guy stealing second base. We're going to hit, this could be a bunt or a swinging bunt, whatever. It's going to bring the third baseman in. The runner's going to see that the third baseman's in, so he's going to try to... He's going to try to get all the way to third base. The new, the new animations that we added this year are the catches on the run. So what you're going to see is that third baseman hustling back, and it's going to be like, I don't know, um, what's a good quarterback receiver combo? You got Brady to um, uh, uh, Edelman. Edelman. Yeah. So you see sure, Brady to sure Edelman here, um, <laughs> catching it on the run and setting up the tag. All right, go ahead, play it. Gotcha. Nice. Okay, we'll show this in slow motion. We did not have this before. 
So what would happen is the first baseman would have to wait for him to get all the way to third base before he could throw this ball. But what would happen in real life? This is what would happen in real life. As the guy gets closer, he would go ahead and try to lead the throw. And it takes care of the exploit of somebody trying to take advantage of the fact that the third baseman vacated the, the bag for a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's Edelman over the middle making the play. Is that not good for you? You got I, a I Patriot am a Rams fan. fan. <laughs> cuts me pretty deep. Cuts me pretty deep. It's fine. Though. All right. I just wear it. Um, oh, okay, man. so that was. <laughs> that was 51. 51. 51, we got a few more. Okay, so just roll through these. These are just some cool, um, some cool new animations that we have. Um, this is a new uh, Rob Foul Ball. So instead of setting up and playing the Rob Foul Ball, uh, we have new Rob Foul Balls from On The Run. So essentially this play is filling a hole where you're kind of getting there a little bit late. Mm -hmm. And then we can play it because a lot of times you get there late and the time it took for him to turn and get set up, the ball was landing and he couldn't play the reach over. So now we have this uh, for forehand and backhand side on both foul lines, where as he's getting there. Uh, this facilitates another hole in our jump at the wall. So you can see here how high he's getting or not how high he's getting. We have the highest versions that we've already had in the game. We had the crash into the walls, but we didn't have anything in between. And so that's what these facilitate. We did them at all different angles. We got a whole bunch of them. Mm. So you'll see trailer. a whole bunch of variety. What's that? One of those was in the trailer. The King Griffey yeah. catch was a new uh, catch off yeah. the wall. And you can see the footing where he's kind of setting himself up. So this will happen for CPU and user, just like everything does. Uh, we've had these in the game. I thought it was a cool play. We showed the, uh, the, the backup outfielder avoiding. This, also, this is a, a new air miss animation by the uh, center fielder. And you can see him avoiding in the background. And some of our new hot shots. So in the past, uh, this is another good um, uh, topic to talk about as well. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like, um, they called them the Olay catches in the infield. Um, and there were some issues with them playing. They were almost filling, there was a bug basically that they were filling some hole or um, catch uh, spots. So uh, when we thought we were playing a catch, we were put playing these Olays to fill those holes mm -hmm. on, on accident. So they weren't playing when they were supposed to. And we figured out what that was. So now those will only play under certain situations where the ball has just got to be completely smoked. Mm -hmm. and it's got to be outside the range of the catch. And these are new hot shots. So the ball's got to be hit really hard. And you'll see different varieties of these hot shot. Um, of these hot shot, knock the ball down and being able to still manage the ball and still be able to make a play. This is another, uh, another version of that. He knocks it down, picks it up and throws him out. Go on the next one. It's another example. Knocks it down, stays with it, still able to throw him out. And I just thought this was cool. <laughs> this is the runner avoiding the ball and it deflects, off, of the, the, it deflects off the first baseman's glove. But I like the level of detail and the logic of just being able to recognize that ball that's smoked at him. And I just thought it was a cool looking play that I ran across. So I want to throw okay. it in there. What's the next one? Okay, these are the new first baseman uh, knocked the ball down. So... This is just to add more variety on those low, uh, those um, low pick catches at first base where they would miss the ball, but they were missing them from catches and they didn't have um, the branching into the pickups. So we just added variety on these. Here's another another uh, example. And I think, what, one more? It's the last one. It's the last one. Okay, and so in these examples, I'm just forcing them so that you guys could see um, some of the new animations that we got. But um, that's really it um, 
You know, I know that's a lot. We talked about mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Um, I, I yeah. hope everybody's excited as I am about Plan 19. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool changes and, and um, all for the better. And again, this is, um, this is us listening to you guys. Um, we really want to make this game every single year um, the best possible game and least frustrating game when you're playing, mm -hmm. especially at the competitive level. level. Um, we want this game to be fair. We want it to be balanced. And, and more importantly, you know, just competitive. We want people to have fun online and play this mm -hmm. game, um, not only online, but offline. And we want to make sure that um, from the new beginners that are coming into this game to the most advanced players, there's a level for everybody to play. Absolutely. Uh, and I saw a question about the bad jumps. Your Mookie Betts, your elite fielders, probably not going to ever see them get a bad jump. Like Gil said, they're scaled. As the fielding ability starts to go down, that's when the propensity of those bad jumps will happen. But Mookie Betts... Not gonna you're not going to see it on the top, not, top tier guys. You're not going to see it on the top not. tier guys. I mean, yeah, that's why you're putting them out there in center field. I mean, I mean, well, those guys can hit, but I mean, if you've got a guy that's a, you know not as solid on the offensive side, but defensively he's he's nails. You know, yeah. you're going to want to put him out there. So. All right, so I think we're going to take a quick, quick, short break, like 10, 20 seconds. Going to say goodbye to Gil, goodbye to Kyle. Yeah. They'll be back for the hitting stream at 3 p.m. and we're going to bring on. Mr. Luis and Mr. Steven, we're going to talk about a new legend and something we didn't talk about at all, building ratings. All right. Good job. All right, guys, we're back. We got two new guests. Steven Tips House has joined us, so has player rating extraordinaire. <laughs> Mr. Player Ratings, who's here to 1 o'clock in the morning every night. Y'all hear us? Y'all hear us? <laughs> Luis Martinez. Hear us? So let's bring up this slide. We haven't talked about this at all. We're going to talk more about this in later on streams uh, throughout the year when Luis finishes regrading everybody. So we have player ratings for fielding regrade. Uh, as you can see, last year, Yasmani Grandal was a 76. This year, his fielding rating is a 91. Francisco Lindor stays the same, but he kind of doesn't. His arm strength is now a lot higher, so his arm accuracy and his reaction. We'll show you all of the ratings later on. And as you can see, my poor man from Detroit right. took, a, took a big, big hit. So we've re-rated all of our fielders. How we're calculating this is we're using advanced stats. Not going to tell you exactly what we're using. Yeah, we're it's, also it's, using yeah go ahead. Because it's, it's not an exact formula, not even with the advanced stats, mm -hmm. you know, but we're, we're trying to gather as much information as possible, the advanced uh, tracking technology, advanced stats, uh, scouting reports from Inside Edge. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a, it's a combination of it's all these things. a combination of a lot of things. But, uh, but they're definitely, ratings are definitely, fielding ratings are gonna, definitely going to be Yeah, uh, you're going to see a lot of changes. Like, for example, um, Mookie is, I think he's 99 fielding ability. Yeah. 92 mm -hmm. arm strength, 80-something, 80 82 arm accuracy, right. and like 90-ish uh, reaction. Like, he is, he is a monster out there. And we'll show you those exact ratings in future streams. Yeah. So, legends. Legends. Yeah. I think a few numbers have been floating out there about legends for 2019. We're adding more, a lot more. We have well over 100 still in the game. Mm -hmm. um, but for this year, there's going to be more than more than 30 new legends you have never seen. Yeah, and so that's that's more than we've added in any single year in the past in the past couple of years when right. you know when we've been uh, you know 
doing DD, DD cards and stuff like that. Right, so you've seen some big names already in the trailer. Who was in the trailer that was just huge legend name? Uh, Willie Mays. Willie Mays. <laughs> that shot took yeah. forever. Yeah, the the hat. <laughs> Looks got amazing. Ty Cobb man. was yep. in there. Yeah. Put some more current day guys. Um, so today we have a new legend reveal in this stream right now. And then we'll do one at the end of the next stream, probably around 3, 4 p.m. Pacific mm -hmm. during the offensive overhaul and improvement stream as well. So two today, and we'll do two more, maybe even more than that, on the future streams Ooh. leading up to launch. And we will have a giveaway at the hitting stream at 3 p.m. There will be a giveaway. So we're going to sign Ken Griffey Jr., sign Ball. Nice. One copy of the Digital Deluxe Edition of the game. Unfortunately, you can't preload it. We tried to see if we could get preloadable codes, but it didn't work out. But we did try, and we're going to give out uh, a 10-pack bundle for car packs and a voucher for... $50 in stubs, which I believe is 67500 So we will have a sweepstakes in the second stream at 3 p.m. Pacific. So to reveal this legend, uh, we have a, a very short little trailer video sort of of him. And he's right up there with the greatest power hitters of all time. And that was Jimmy Fox. Number three, Jimmy <laughs> Fox. So, right, where did he start his career? So, Jimmy Fox, one of the best power hitters of all time, fourth highest slugging percentage of all time. He started with his career with the Philadelphia Athletics, right. which of course then turned into the Oakland A's. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you saw him there on the Red Sox. Uh, Three-time MVP winner, won the MVP with both clubs, actually. Three-time. Uh, Three-time. Uh, triple crown winner. And uh, when he retired, he was the he had the most home runs ever by a right-handed hitter, mm -hmm. and second all-time to Babe. Huge. Uh, there was there was that year that uh, there was one year that stood out for home yeah. runs. It was 1932, 58 home runs would have tied Babe Ruth's record of 60 in a single season had not had it not been for a rainout game. That's so a crazy little 58 fact, power, yeah. uh, 58 home run kind of power in the game. Think about what that's going to mean. And that was just one year of his career. He was phenomenal. 360 something kind of hitter in the average. Yeah. Started playing ball when he was in high school in the majors. Yeah, he was that an athlete. He played he played catcher uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he played multiple positions. He and what what was his nickname? The Beast. Right. Jimmy Fox was the Beast. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see a few different versions like you said in the Athletics, the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. um, I saw Chris Davis uh, of the current Athletics was one of those guys that had three straight seasons, I think, with 40 home runs. Uh -huh. And he's the first athletic to do that since Jimmy Fox. Mm. So those are kind of records yeah. that Fox has held for decades and decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, he was one of the youngest ever to get to 500 home runs. Just a great legend to add to MLB The Show 19. So we'll reveal another legend coming up this afternoon. Mm -hmm. yep. So check in with that. That's another awesome, awesome legend. All right, yeah. and I, I do believe that is it. Also. Uh, the stream next week, starting on stream next week, we'll start to reveal who those diamonds are for the pre-order. We'll, we'll probably do a, a few per team, and then we'll probably do maybe a few more right. on that last stream, probably development tournament. We'll also give you all of the ratings for all of the legends on that stream way in a few weeks yeah, down somewhere the Somewhere in mid-March, we'll do somewhere the, the Diamond Dynasty right. content, including mm -hmm. the attributes for a lot you of the flashbacks, all of the a lot of the legends. Yeah, we'll do we'll do a, we'll do a version for each of the the legends that are that have been revealed to, to this point. Right. So Jimmy Fox, our first legend to be revealed since that trailer that uh, trailer that you saw, and we'll have another one. We we'll have this another afternoon. one today. So that's it for the fielding stream. We'll be back at three p.m. for the hitting stream. We're going to talk about all the hitting changes, pitching changes, pitch speeds, closed alpha learnings, and we're going to have a sweepstake. So we'll see you back at three p.m. <laughs> Look, I get it rocking like a cradle. I never so, but I was able to see my partners make the road bread without the stable. While packing something but that make it tough spin like dreidels. Oh, I hung up round them shells like April. Oatmeal, oat feel me when I get to saying it's so real. Folk will think that it's entertaining till fly, no subliminal. 
yeah. The gift to carry and torture. Sometimes I get nervous as a suitor that's entering courtship. Oh, then I get to feeling euphoric. Holy flow, every bar low key should be pinned in the. Ooh. And look at she so gorgeous. She be with me whether I was flipping a Tesla or Taurus. Oh. Lame ducks be like, what pond you from? I tell them harder than when monsoons come. And they chase cheese, only dipping when that fondue come. And run that bass till they heart go out just like you, son. And look, this for my partners who low-key pitching the mound. And those that laughed at me when I stayed at my mama house. My pockets fatter now. My mama see something to brag about. And I spit punches and bunches like I'm Marvin Hackler now. Station. Station.